Hello everyone, I'm Nian from Huawei. And today I'm going to tell you about the hormone kernel, a commercialized general purpose microkernel that has been deployed in production. So the paper is basically revisiting the microkernel design and emerging connected intelligent world with has more diversified type of connected devices, feature rich ecosystems, and provides immersive experience in various scenarios. And we argue that the monolithic kernels encounters numerous issues. Well, it is worthwhile to explore another avenue of involving the microkernel into a general purpose OS kernel in such a scenario. And first, I'd like to discuss the, uh, the issues with the monolithic kernel, such as Linux. So there are actually three primary reasons that motivates the transition into the microkernels. First, the microkernels can improve the security and reliability by reducing the trusted code bases, avoiding data leakage, and providing fault isolations. While monolithic kernels are widely recognized as difficult to satisfy some high-level industry certifications. Besides, due to the tight coupling of modulars in the monolithic kernel, it becomes harder and harder to integrate some domain-specific strategies and optimizations. For example, the Prempt RT patch that still has not been merged into mainline X after over 10 years. Moreover, such customization is very expensive to involve with upstream for security patches. Besides the frequently changed KPIs that lead to significant engineering effort, we find that the end-to-end -end performance of the complex system is hard to reason about that synchronizing with upstream requires large-scale performance regression testing and even rewriting the whole patches to maintain its functionality and performance improvement. This also explains why massive products uh, on the market uh, still run Linux 2.6. However, transitioning to a microkernel in the products is not as easy as flipping a switch or enabling a config. Although the microkernel has been started for decades, most state of art microkernels target domain specific scenarios and face profound challenges in the emerging scenarios. We found all these challenges come from the differences between those scenarios. First, the applications in the domain specific scenarios are customized and source available. Well, in the emerging scenarios, apps and open ecosystem are mostly distributed in binary form. Moreover, the resources are pre-partitioned and self-managed in the domain-specific scenario, where apps are in, uh, in the emerging scenario in an open ecosystem, uh, they always call for coordinated and globalized resource management. Furthermore, emerging scenario typically put significant emphasis over the performance. Otherwise, it is hard to convince the production team to adopt a new S kernel. So with all these differences and its corresponding challenges, we started the hormone kernel projects about eight years ago, targeting involving the microkernel into a general purpose OS kernel for such emerging scenarios. So our major contributions include revisiting the traditional microkernel wisdoms, identifying those unsolved challenges, and addressing these challenges with the hormone kernel. And the hormone kernel has also maintained the most benefits of the microkernel by retaining its crucial design principles. We have implemented and deployed the hormone kernel in production, and it typically achieved improved performance. So this is our line for today's talk, and next I'd like to revisit the traditional microkernel wisdoms, illustrate their corresponding challenges by presenting the observed characteristics when deploying the hormone kernel at scale, and introduce how the hormone kernel addressed them correspondingly. So here we list the revisited conventional wisdoms in the microkernels, and first is the min principles. principle. So, Microkernels achieve good security, reliability, and extensibility by following the main method principle. They separate the policy with the mechanism, decouples and isolates OS services, and applies fine grained access control. And Hormone kernel retains the minimality principle to preserve its most benefits. Specifically, Hormone only keeps the minimal functionality in the core kernel and puts all other functions in the separated OS services. And unlike the hybrid kernel, which places all the OS services as a whole in the kernel space, OS services in the homo kernel are well isolated and least privileged. And next is IPC and isolations among the services. So state-of-art microkernels typically put all the services at user space and provides fast paths to speed up IPC. However, we find that the IPC frequency increases rapidly in the emerging scenario which significantly amplifies the performance degradation, even with the IPC fast pass. So the figure presents the IPC frequencies in different scenarios when we're configuring old OS services to be well isolated in the user space. And as shown in the figures, the smartphone has a significantly higher IPC frequency than the domain-specific routers, which is partly caused by a higher syscall frequency that translated to IPC to different OS services. 
Thus, even with the IPC fast path that still takes more than 1,000 cycles in a Raspberry Pi per round trip, IPC causes two to three times performance degradations in phones. And the major overhead of IPC is the expensive address space and privilege switches that enforce a strict address space isolation. However, we've observed that not all the OS services require the same class of isolation. And for example, the matured, carefully designed and performance critical OS services can be subjected to weaker isolation, while those rapidly evolving or those with large untrusted code bases require more robust isolation for preventing corrupting the kernel. Thus, we propose a differentiated isolation classes, which classifies services and defines isolations between them. So there are actually three different isolation classes in the home kernel, from the class zero to class two. And class zero is the core trusted code basis, where no isolation is enforced, while the class two is the user-based services enforced with address-based isolation. Between them, the class one also resides in the kernel space, but use mechanism enforced isolation, similar to previous intra-kernel isolations. So specifically, it divides different OS services into different memory domains and use hardware like the Intel PKS or ARM Watchpoint to restrict that OS services can only access memory within its domains. By doing so, the IPC between the services within class one only involves lightweight domain switches, which greatly reduce the IPC overhead between them. Homon further creates gates to switch between those domains, and such gates are non-bypassable since they use privileged instructions, which are forbidden to be executed by services by using the lightweight CFI and secure monitors. So by doing so, the isolation class one has a similar RAM model as the address-based isolation with an additional attack surfaces towards the applied mechanisms. Besides the isolations among services, there is an intuitive design decision that all the services should be well partitioned, like the file system and memory manager. However, it also causes severe performance issues uh, by introducing the state double booking. So for example, the page caches are double bookkeeping in both the memory manager and the file system. It not, it not only wastes a lot of memory, but also causes an actual IPC round trip when handling the frequent appear map fail page fault and make it two times slower than the Linux. So to reduce IPC frequency and emulate double bookkeeping, Homo allows call less in the couple of services during deployment. So by doing so, the latency of the paging for the map fail is reduced by 50%. Both the service coalescing and the isolation classes we have just introduced are all configurable during deployment. So home on kernel can assemble the system flexibly to accommodate various scenarios and can quickly separate them or enforce stronger isolation when new attacks emerge. Another hallmark of the microkernel is the capability fine grained access control. However, we find that the capabilities hide the kernel objects behind, posing non-trivial ahead when updating objects managed by the services outside the core kernel. So when updating objects like the page tables, the memory manager has to first serialize the operation and issue a cap call to the core kernel, which will refer to the cap table, deserialize the request, and finally apply the update to corresponding kernel objects. Such round trip happens on every page forward, especially the non uniform one, which frequently appears on phones. Thus, instead of applying capabilities to all kernel objects, Homo supplements capabilities with address tokens that bypasses the kernel when granted. Specifically, Homo uses the address as the token and use map and unmap operation to grant or revoke a specific object. And the object can be mapped read-only or read-write. The read-write map object can be directly updated without kernel in moment, whose content is also strictly restricted for preventing corrupting the kernel. Well, for the read-only mapped object, Homo provides a write visits call to update its value, and the kernel will verify its permission by checking the address when applying the up updates. It also enumerates the serialize and deserialize operations in the capabilities. By using the address tokens, the object can be efficiently co-managed by services and the core kernel. For example, it speeds up the paging by adopting a strategy that making the paging decision in advance, resulting in being even slightly faster than Linux. Address tokens also allows efficient implementation of functions like fork and pull. For details, please kindly refer to the paper. Lex is compatibility. Previous microkernel typically achieve subset policy compliance as the OS interface to reuse the applica rich application ecosystem. However, we found that the practical deployment requires more than POSIX. As shown in the Cisco distribution figures, the apps and the drivers frequently use IO controls to extend the system API. Moreover, since there's a longer fail obstruction in the kernel, such states are distributed in different OS services, and the kernels have to correctly assemble them to implement functions like fork and pull, 
which make it hard to implement them efficiently. Thus, Homon kernel takes one step forward and achieves the next binary compatible by providing an ABI compliant stream, which redirects the Linux calls and translates them into IPC to different OS services. It also serves as a central repository for global states like the field descriptors and allows e efficient implementations of a port. By doing so, the Homon kernel is capable of supporting complex framework like the Open Harmony and the AOSP. And not but not least, the drivers. So we observed that there are more than 700 drivers required by phones and vehicles to function correctly. And according to our estimation, it will take more than 5,000 person a year to rewrite them. And both previous work, including transplanting the runtime environments, faces compatibility and engineering issues, while the VM-based method causes thread and memory double management that significantly degrade the performance. So to reuse the rich app driver ecosystem with affordable engineering effort, Homon pr proposed the driver containers, which provides the necessary KPIs by placing a Linux runtime at the user space. To make it run correctly, Homon redirects some of the KPIs via light, lightweight DC-based layer, which forbids the double management of the VM, in the VM-based method. Such APIs are relative stables that only minor applications is needed to support different Linux versions. When registering our devices, a separate device manager will create a device file in the file system, and when applications invoke drivers to write control, the file system will issue IPC to the driver, which controls the hardware directly. Such a Linux driver container should be placed in the user space for security and license concerns, which hurts a critical path performance. So Homon further improves the performance by adopting a control and data plan separation. Specifically, it only handles the control plan that includes the cumbersome operations like the init in the user space container, while redirecting the performance critical I.O. request to a rewritten lightweight twin driver in the native driver container that can be enforced with weaker isolations. By doing so, the Homo kernel is capable of achieving similar performance with Linux with affordable engineering efforts. So next, I'd like to share the implementation and performance of the Homo kernel. So Homo kernel is implemented in a subset of C with a core kernel about 90,000 lines of code and our services about 1 million lines of code. And Homo has already been deployed in tens of millions of devices, including the safety critical ones like the secure OS and smart vehicles. And the performance oriented smartphones and tablets. They all share the same code basis with different configurations. Homo is also certified with high-level industry certifications like CCL6 Plus and SLD. And we'd like to highlight Homo's performance through three questions. The first one is how does Homo perform in the micro benchmark? Compared with the next 5.10, Homo achieves improved performance in network and connect switches will have similar performance in memory and handling page faults. Homo does has issues with fork and clone due to its microkernel architecture. However, we observe that the overhead of fork in the real world comes from copying a lot of virtual memory areas, which can be further accelerated through parallelism. And another question is that whether the inherent decoupling of all services leads to a high load. And we measure the activity instructions in typical scenarios, and the loads of the home kernels turns out to be even 19% lighter than the Linux, thanks to its flexible composition and the shorter execution passes. And for the end-to-end -end performance comparison, Homo achieves 17% shorter upset time and 10% less frame drops in typical usage lasting for 24 hours, thanks to the lighter loads. So we conclude with the lessons and experience for, from deploying the Homo kernel. And here we, we only highlight some, some of them. And for others, please kindly refer to the paper. The first is the compatibility. So we find that being compatible is a crucial first step for commercial deployments, since the product typically prefers a unified code basis for rest platforms. And there's a lot of third-party apps and drivers are distributed in binary form. So only by being compatible at first can a new S kernel be validly deployed and have a chance to involve towards the latent interface for improved performance. Besides, we find it is the configurable composition that allows deploying the Homo kernel in various scenarios with a single code base, which makes a project cost efficient. For example, in the secure OS, Homo applies address-based address, address -based isolations to OS services for better security, while in smartphones, Homo enforces weaker isolation to mature services for better performance. Homo also facilitates future explorations of the microkernel design in production heterogeneous systems. For example, the configurable com system composition makes a solid starting point for implementing some heterogeneous OVL architecture in the production heterogeneous system, or scale out the software in the future non-cache coherent mining core system with distributed or partitioned OS services. 
So to conclude, Homo is a commercialized general purpose microkernel that retains the minimality principle while providing structural support to address the challenges in the emerging scenarios. Homo has been deployed in production and typically achieved improved performance. And that's all for this talk, and I'd like to take questions.